saw the place where the possible met the impossible and moved toward it. They walked for many an hour and many a day until, finally, they crossed the edge of paradox. Greetings, greetings, humanity, and welcome one and all to Channel Other Doc. I am Jim, your friendly Lacuna GM. I use he, him pronouns, and this is our Invisible Sun campaign, The Edge of Paradox. Invisible Sun is a surreal slice of life game by Maudie Cook Games. We are integrating the directed campaign, but most of this game happens spontaneously. Um, we're going to go ahead and go around and say hi to everyone, see who they are and who they're playing. Uh, starting once again with Janiyah. Hello! Hello! Uh, my name is Chaya. I use she, her pronouns, um, as does my character, Shah Gamelon, who is a established gallant of the Order of Makers who cages adversaries. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, now we shall head over to Wild. Hello. Yes. Hello. I'm Wild, at, at Wild Engineer on Twitch and Twitter. I am playing Shantano, an itinerant empath of the Order of Apostate who splinters into fragments. They use they, them pronouns. Awesome, awesome. And uh, now we shall go over to Aris. Hello. Hello, oh, I am Aris, or Anis Panthera. Uh, my pronouns are she, they, and today I'm going to be playing Aroshka Ruzik, the aromatic empath apostate who converses with everything. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And uh, now we shall head over to Anino. Hello. How's it going, everyone? My name is Anino. I use he, him pronouns, but my character, Mac the Husk, uses they, them pronouns. And they are an established <laughs> character sheet. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. I'm you think after scrambling like two years it. playing this game, you'd be able right? to remember your damn well, sentence. Yeah, well, mine mine actually changed a bit, too. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, established enthusiastic of the Order of the Goetica who provides a vessel for spirits. Awesome. Excellent. Cool, cool, cool. Yes, always in flux, these things are. <laughs> um, always in flux. Um, and uh, now let us head over to Danielle. Hello. Hello, I am Danielle. I use she, her pronouns, and so does my character, Vormera Vanas, aka Vor, uh, who is a connected ardent of the Order of Weavers who shepherds minds. Excellent, excellent. Um, and uh, now, like we do with most games on this channel, we're going to be using the X card, the N card, and the O card. If we hit something that's crossing a line for one of us, any of us can type an X in the Zoom video chat or anywhere else, hold up a card, make an X symbol, and we'll go back and do something else. Uh, if something happens that we're okay having in the game but we don't want a graphic description of it, we can type an N in the Zoom chat and we'll fade to black on it or we'll put it behind a veil. So it'll be there, but we won't go into detail. Finally, if we're exploring a topic or an area of roleplay that's particularly intense for us but we want to keep going anyway, we can put an O in the chat to let us know we're okay and that we're all good to keep piling on the drama. 
Something else we can do is put an O with a question mark after it when we're moving into a difficult topic, or if we say or we do something and then think, maybe that might have been a little too much, then everyone else can respond to that, again with an X, an N, or an O, to let us know if we're still doing okay. We're also using the pause. If any of us needs to take some time, we can ask for a pause in the game while we discuss things, or just take a break for as long as anyone needs. Um, as a reminder, just a few content warnings. This game may contain body horror, surreal imagery, spiders, snakes, and references to memory loss, death, and existential crises. Uh, at any time, you can type exclamation point ISCW uh, in the chat to see that. Let me make sure I put the right one of those in the... I did not. Let me fix that. <laughs> there's, a, there's a timer that's going to come up with that on it. Uh, as soon as I put it in correctly, and there it is. Good. I had the screen up, just in case. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, there we go. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. We, we, we Also, important to note, there may be brunch and there may be mimosas also on this, uh, as, as happens. Mm -hmm. happens. It's important. Thank you for reminding me that. That's important. Um, also, please remember, we have an open door policy, which means any of us and any of you can feel free to step away from this at any time if we need to. It's just a game, and mental health is always more important. Um, so, now as we as we, we think back and try to remember what happened last time, um, let's see, there was the, uh, yes, that was when the, that was when we got the second of the three, uh, suggestions of the royal brood that had been planted by the uh, the insidious um, in, um, um, in the uh, in the in uh, in the uh, community leaders of uh, yestervale um, and I have to get three of them the, the the three of the royal brood in order to basically banish the insidious from the place for like a year and a day um, and uh, so. Yes, they are the first three eggs laid by Insidious. They will cause all the implanted suggestion in the area to end and drive the Insidious from the region for a year and a day. That's right. Okay, good. Um, and uh, so they uh, they very quickly they they left from the uh, they, they were at the blacksmith shop, which was up by um, up by the hotel they were staying in, um, on their uh, to to try to get to the mayor because they knew the mayor had another of these suggestion eggs implanted in their minds. Um, they went down, uh, to, uh, to the mayor's house. On the way to the mayor's house, they encountered an angry mob, um, who had apparently been riled up about the way in which they, uh, these Vizlai have been coming into town and changing things fundamental to the way of life in Yestervale. Um, they successfully hid from this angry mob, uh, and, uh, and let them go past. All right, well, actually misled them. They, uh, they managed to, uh, um, get uh, uh, Max familiar Sagan uh, dashed out and uh, led them on a on a uh, a wild avian chase. I have forgotten whether Sagan is a crow or a raven. 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 Excellent. Okay. Um, good because had he been a crow, he probably wouldn't have been able to carry the lantern. Uh, but anyway, as they are smaller. Uh, at least they are in my mind. Um, but, uh, where am I? Oh, yes, there I am. Uh, yeah, so no, they, uh, they, they got past them, went to the, uh, went to the mayor's house, um, got into the mayor's house, um, after, after briefly trying to negotiate with the door knocker, uh, who did not want to let them in. Um, and, uh, They went inside. Um, in the front, the mayor had a shotgun and was uh, had tried to uh, tried to use that against Mac, who was able to uh, shrug it off. Uh, and uh, basically, they went basically they went in in the mayor's house. They were able to subdue the mayor, and uh, and uh, Vor was able to pull the suggestion out of the mayor's mind um, and fed it to her Nemovor that she her pet that she pet that she, she keeps uh, on a, in a topaz around her neck. Um, meanwhile, uh, um, also Chantineau and uh, uh, Chantineau had, uh, was also in the uh, in the rear of the house, uh, sort of and uh, Murder was there hanging out um, just basically trying to explain starting to learn a little bit of Murder's sign language 
that it murder sort of indicated uh, okay, that the there was arsenic in the cupboard. The arsenic was going to be used, but now, just now, it seems, uh, it is now possible that the arsenic will not be used, so I'm good. Um, and uh, Chantano invited Murder to brunch and uh, Murder very, uh, to, uh, to, to their next brunch, and Murder very, very graciously accepted. Um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Um, but, um, the, uh, let's see, where are we? Digressing. Um, so that, I think, was most of it. They, they found also a, uh, so they, they, oh yes, there was an insidious underneath the sofa in the living room. Um, and that was taken care of, uh, pretty quickly they tried to, tried to attack a couple of them. Um, but they managed to capture it. Um, there was also, similarly, there was an insidious in the stove, uh, in the, the wood-burning stove in the kitchen, uh, which they managed to paralyze. Um, and uh, because Shanto drained the thing, um, and, uh, they man they, and so they've effectively captured a second one, if they, they, if they want to do something with it. Um, and uh, meanwhile, the... Uh, the uh, the ice jaguar spirit that uh, Mac has enlisted to help them is uh, upstairs uh, in the mayor's house helping to tackle the third um, along with the mayor's um, dog Niles. Um, the mayor's dog being looks mostly like a dog except it has a giant eyeball as a head. Um, and uh, so that was where we left off. So that was like less than an hour having passed. <laughs> Uh, basically in there. Um, so I wanted to find out first, just so we can, as we are bringing things back into the now, um, I, I just wanted to check in, uh, I, I wanted to check in with Shah, um, because uh, I know you'd wanted to, to look for materials. It is kind of, uh, I, I will say it is kind of dark, uh, so it's going to be a little difficult to do it in the like half hour that uh, has has passed at this point. But we can we can do something if you like. Was there something you wanted to uh, put together or um, or do or work on? I mean, I don't think there's anything that I need to accomplish during this period of time. But uh, sure. but I think just for kind of funsies characterness. I really like the idea that Shaw had just buried herself in the back of this blacksmith shop immediately at the mention of working and just didn't notice when everybody left. Um, <laughs> and, and maybe has kind of come back out with like notes and things and tools and like, where did everybody go? You know, an hour later, um, while there's been all of this really important stuff that happened. Very cool. So I'm going to give you a I'm going to give you a choice here. Um, <clears throat> would you like um, <laughs> so so the choice is Would you like to encounter some things happening up by the hotel, or would you like me to magically re reunite you with the rest of the party? Um, I mean, I always like to be with the rest of our group of shenanigans. Sure. Um, but but if it works better for your from your more I see the actual plot point of view. I'm happy to run into things near the hotel. Plot. <laughs> it's that thing we have oh, yeah. sometimes. Yes, I remember. I remember. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Since since I tend to distract us away from that into silliness, I thought maybe <laughs> I should give you the opportunity to put me in that. <laughs> Tell you what, we'll we'll try in best of both worlds. It so real quick, okay. uh, what you're gonna note um, is uh, is that. Um, there appears to be <laughs> raised voices and people with pitchforks and torches and other farming implements approaching the hotel when you emerge from the uh, from the blacksmith shop, um, who seem who who seem upset and bent on um, and and bent on doing someone harm. Um, who is apparently at the hotel? I will let you know that they have left. That the party has left um, after getting the uh, after getting the suggestion out of Groden's head. They left Groden in the blacksmith shop. So Groden is currently lying unconscious, still in the blacksmith shop. Um, so um, 
I am curious, kind of, if you want to... I, actually, I am curious. Do you, is there something you want to do here before I do anything well, I mean, if, strange? <laughs> yeah. If Broden is, is still unconscious on the floor, I think I would walk over and see if he was okay as I came out of my sort of art yeah. haze. Um, yeah, just sort of checking him over. It looks like, uh, so after, you think his, he's physically okay. He, you know, he, he got knocked out. Um, and he'll, he's going to come to at some point. Um, you suspect that he might be a little bit scrambled from uh, the extraction uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the suggestion that happened. Um, since you're given to understand this was done by an ice leopard, uh, ice, ice jaguar. I keep changing. For some reason, I ice don't cat. understand why this is. <laughs> Anytime I have to mention a big cat, there's like, it's like I'm playing roulette. And the name, and I know it's a jaguar, but for some reason, <laughs> a random big cat type is going to come out. I don't know why. Um, but, um... <laughs> Since he was, uh, since since the since the uh, the the uh, psychic surgery was performed by an ice jaguar, um, he might he might be a little bit scrambled when he comes out of it. Um, so it's it, but you know it's it, it's hard to say at this point. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think I'll move him somewhere safe because I would assume if there's an angry mob, they're probably angry because of these you know, monster things. And they figured out that people, these monster things have been stripping their memory. And so they might be coming looking for the innkeeper. So I'm going to put him someplace safe. I'm sure um, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing I can possibly think of yeah. that a group of people would be angry about. Um, so I, I will make sure that he is safe and sort of tucked in somewhere. Uh, maybe I'll write him a note. Uh, look out, there's an angry mob. Um, <laughs> And uh, and then I will, for safety's sake, I will pick up maybe a, a big stick or a, a fire poker. Um, not that I don't have my battle fan, but that's pretty extreme. Um, and I will try to sneak out and look for signs of where my friends went. Okay, so um, yes, there's a cot in the back of the uh, in the back of the shop, um, so you actually can put him there um, and kind of cover him like a blanket or what have you. Um, and just sort of disguise the fact that he's there. You can put the lights out. Um, they weren't headed for the blacksmith shop, so um, they, and if they, if they, they, they perhaps won't think to look there. Um, or, well, I think also you'd probably think, though, to put a light near him. Um, just in case there are any more insidious around. You probably, I think, would think to right. do that also. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's true. I don't think I would make it dark in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I would be making it dark anywhere right now. That's fair. <laughs> that's completely fair. I'm also going to say you were at least vaguely aware that as the mutterings you heard from... Um, from the... Uh, from the... Where am I? I don't know where I am. Uh, from from your companions as they were leaving, um, is that you, you're pretty much right, you, you you're pretty sure they were headed for the mayor's house. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll sneak over there. Um, maybe get halfway there and realize that I've uh, I still have like pencils and measuring calipers stuck in my hair and pull all of those out and put them back in my tool bracer. Um, so that I'm presentable when I see my friends. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, let me see. Where am I? All right. So yes, you're going to uh, you're going to start start heading down. You're going to sneak down to where the mayor's house is, and you'll be entering the scene probably shortly. Um, we have now entered a new phase um, where I'm going to finally turn over a card that's going to go on the invisible sun. Um, once again, I can't put it on the one that you see uh, on our screen um, because we were right there and I don't want to flip over a bunch of cards leading up to it. Um, but uh, that's where we left off last time. 
and uh, so and I understand that. By the way, for anyone who's watching who th who who, uh, who might know the rules and think and be thinking, wait, you're supposed to do that do that fresh every session. My answer to that is the way that I GM time stretches. <laughs> So, I'm adapting it to the present situation. Um, when we get to a point where time has passed, then we'll reset. Um, so, this card is going to go on the invisible sunspot the, uh, that, that I'm about to draw here. And I'm just going to draw it directly. Okay. All right. All right. Let me show you the card. Yes. <laughs> The, the translation that uh, has been provided in chat is not entirely inaccurate. Um, where am I? Oh my god. Let's see. We're going to transition over. Card, assuming I can actually wait. Let me actually open the card. There we go. I've drawn the alchemist. So let's see. Oh yes, I should point out. Um, yeah, just for those wondering about in chat, uh, who, who, who if 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 the the bot's looking looking more aggressive than usual, that's because I have actually made it a little more aggressive than usual. Um, uh, owing to recent real life crap, so just uh, just so, and I'm sure folks are quite aware of if you're familiar with Twitch. Uh, so so there's there. So my apologies in advance uh, for that, um, as it's uh, you know it, real life dealing with it. Um, where am I? The alchemist. As soon as I can, there we go, the alchemist. The alchemist seeks transformation, usually in the sense of advancement or enlightenment. She hopes to better herself through understanding as adept of the secrets family. The alchemist is, of course, complicated. Her knowledge is deep and vast. Magical processes surround her. Chemicals and substances and the flame that catalyzes them all dance upon her fingertips. But her true raw materials are her own essence and her own soul. Makers often see this card as a good omen. In Divination, the alchemist's complexity suggests that there's far more to a situation than previously understood. Just as often, however, she indicates drastic and sudden change, a new opportunity, a new person involved, or a new facet to a problem. Should one turn the alchemist and dangerous elixir consecutively, this is called the ultimate transformation, and it suggests total and complete upheaval of the situation and possibly someone involved in it. The interesting thing is that this card is on the invisible sun, <laughs> which means it's going to be continuously in play until we get back around to the invisible sun on the path of suns. So I feel like I should take that to mean if we turn over the uh, the 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 dangerous elixir during this sequence that there will be an effect <laughs> there, there will be some upheaval happening so we'll have that to look forward to um let's see this is the adept of secrets let me go ahead and look through here real quick Play another card on the next sun. Well, here we go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play play another card. Uh, so we can so we can see what what happens. Um, do I have to do that every single? No, probably not. Um, <laughs> let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and turn it over. And this will be going in the silver spot. Ah! Okay. Once again, we have drawn... Let me go ahead and put that once again on display. Uh, let me just go over to it. This is card 20, 24. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Let me go ahead and uh, undo, uh, undo and then pull it back over. 
Uh, I have drawn the revealing knife. Um, it seems as though, uh, however, uh, OBS is reluctant to allow me to display it for some reason. Let me try directly through here. There we go. That's not very revealing of OBS. It's not very, it's, it's an unrevealed revealing knife. There we go. It, it's, hmm? it's because it's underneath the Adept of Secrets. So it has to ah, be it's a, a secret secretly revealing knife. knife. <laughs> <laughs> You're secretly revealing the knife. Um, <laughs> we've had this recently, uh, so I, I don't feel the need to go over it in as much detail. Um, I, don't, I think we've had this recently. Um, cuts everything, slices through buildings or mountains as easily as paper or flesh. Anything you have to get. Basically, stuff's coming out. <laughs> In, in divination, when it's turned, it suggests careful, precise action is required for what lies ahead. Indicates there are secrets to be discovered, and whether their revelation is good or ill tiding is up to the individual concerned. Um, and most assume the next card played on the Path of Suns indicates the nature of the secret revealed by the knife. <laughs> this is a pale card. Pale magic is up. Green magic is down. We are now under the pale sun. I'm going to swap suns. Uh, on our... Uh, on our on our thing here. If you can barely see it. <laughs> I need to do something about that. Um, so that being the case. We, we, sadly, we no longer have the blanket plus one, but we do have an exciting possible explosion that can happen at any time. Um, so... Good. Meanwhile, at the mayor's house, um, the mayor has been untied. Um, murder is no longer in the house. So it's just uh, Shantano and Aroshka and Mac and Vor and Mayor Tambly and there's some barking, psychic barking coming from upstairs and some some spiritual ice growling coming from upstairs. <laughs> and uh, so what are you folks doing? This was the second one that uh, we did, right? We, we, we had ju I had just grabbed one of the um, bugs from the oven, right? <laughs> yes, you've got you've got Shantano has a paralyzed Insidious mm. that they're carrying right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Fun. <laughs> Do we have the other one in a box? Yeah, you got the other one in a box. Yeah, we'll go get the box. Be we'll like, Do you want to put it in here? We'll just wrap it up. We'll put like a big bow on it. We'll give it to the mushrooms. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Can't help, I guess. Or can't hurt. Do that thing where, like, we could, like, just barely crack the box open. Yeah. You still have the light blazing away in here from your most recent spell cast. So, yeah, the the, ins the insidious in the box is like... <laughs> um, and, uh... Just chuck it in. Yeah. Put it in. Sort of lands with a thud next to it. You close the box. And, uh... <laughs> Meanwhile, Mac is um, standing there, and he's looking at the, you know, the hole that tore through his shirt when he got shot <laughs> by, the, um, by the shotgun. And he's, like, picking out buckshot that embedded into his um, flesh armor. And uh, yeah, so the mayor just sort of looks over and like, I'm so sorry. Believe it or not, it's not the uh, worst thing that's happened to me. <laughs> oh my goodness. In your defense, it wasn't your fault. Was I mean, it was your, situation. yeah, it was your fingers on the trigger, but the idea wasn't yours. 
No, it wasn't. There's another one. Uh, upstairs. Is that like uh, the main control one, or is that no? There were just one? they they planted three of them here just so that they would be. They just, three of them decided to be here as sort of a. In a sense, there was a. Uh, they wanted to keep an eye on things and uh, keep you folks from getting to me. I think. I'll look at my friends and be like, are we going to play exterminators? <laughs> or are we satisfied with our progress? Uh, oh no, we have to we have to get all of these. All right, that's fine with me. I just wanted to confirm. <clears throat> so, I'm going to shake the box. <laughs> you can hear them like squealing in there. One more to go. <laughs> Maybe we should question them and find out where the queen is. I recommend that we get the third one before we do, and, and maybe deal with the other. Um, it's a good person, Che, I think, is the one that we haven't done. Um, yeah. We deal with good person, Che, before we try to question them. So that way we can go to a safer location. Or looked around the mayor's house and it's like, oh, is there a safer location? The mayor's house is pretty well fortified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like rethinking that as the words come out of her mouth. Like, well, maybe not, but we should at least get the third one. Is the mayor's... No, that's wrong. I was thinking... Was the mayor's office also the mayor's house or is that... Yes. So her office is kind of in the front. You're, si you're still, you know, you're back in the living room you were in before the uh, the office type part of the of the place is closer to the front, um, where there's more, you know, there are a bunch of wooden chairs and like there's a desk and what have you, and it's more like a living room toward the back, where the where the furniture you sat on and everything is, and the fireplace and all that. And then there are stairs going up to the second floor um, in here as well. Well, I guess it's time to go upstairs. Mac will uh, rest the shotgun across his back and uh, <laughs> climb up the stairs. Figure out where uh, Ivalice is. Yeah. So as you head up... Um... <clears throat> You know, there's a lot of sort of there's been a lot of sort of crashing and then a lot of again this you hear this sort of this muffled barking that you're not sure if you're hearing with your ears but you're hearing more in your head um, and uh, as you get up there um, you see there are uh, there, there there's a hallway uh, leading to a few different rooms um, you can pretty quickly suss out which room it is um, there's a, kind of a study that you go into, and uh, you see that where there are some books and another desk and uh, some things and some chairs. And uh, at this point, um, it looks as though on either side of this desk, uh, which has open area both front and back, um, you see uh, on one side you see Ivalice, and on the other side you see this dog with an eyeball for a head. I remember that dog. And uh, me and, and that dog are friends. <laughs> and they're like they're like on either side of the <laughs> of the desk, and uh, it looks like underneath the desk they've got uh, they've got the third one cornered. Oh, well, I guess this shouldn't take long. No, Mac is just going to level the shotgun at at the thing. <laughs> and uh, take a sh and fire. Just okay. So uh, this thing is uh, is level six. You have a. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a situational bonus of. Um, I'm going to give you two points toward that. So it's going to be down to four because you've got these these 
these two beings teaming up and helping you. Um, and so right now you'd need a four or better. What else do you want to throw at this, if anything? Um, can I can I use game theory? I mean, I figured it's trapped. <laughs> I, I, I know how to uh, deal a checkmate. <laughs> oh, you've played Doom. Why not? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> because that's a three. Because yeah. uh, uh, thanks to Vor being nearby. Uh, oh, you get three levels of it because of. Oh, yeah. I see. I see. I see how you're looking at this. You can kind of, yeah. If you're if you if you're there long enough to turn it into a kind of a game, then yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll let you uh, I'll let you do that. <laughs> I I think what he's gonna do, and it, this is kind of mean, but he's just gonna angle the gun in a few places to get the uh, bug to sort of squirm and try to uh, bury itself deeper into the desk. Yeah, yeah. So you play you play this game of of. Of shotgun and, uh, and and millipede with it, um, yeah. and um, which is the new version of Cat and Mouse that, that just came out this year, um, and uh, yeah, you, you you basically then when you fire you get the thing, pretty much dead center, and uh, you the thing you blow the thing apart pretty much. It's, uh... Like well, that's that. Also, there's some nice new little holes in the floor and the lower part of the desk. <laughs> yes, well, I, I don't think we've ever really been too um, reluctant when it comes to property damage. <laughs> so, the so, worst uh, guess ever. So, Sha, you're approaching the mayor's house. Um, <laughs> are, you, are you approaching from the front or the back? So I'm approaching from the front, of course. Okay. <laughs> so the front door is open. Oh. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's I hope standing nothing's open. Happened. As you approach, <laughs> yeah, you hope nothing's happened. As you get to the uh, to the doorstep, up, up, you're coming up to the doorstep, and then you hear a, a shotgun being fired from inside the house. <laughs> oh. Um, we should I... add that the uh, the door is actually broken off its hinge because Matt yeah, it is. kicked it down. That, that's true. <laughs> he decided to go with. Open is a loose word. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, yeah. Um, Shaw is immediately going to pull her battle fan in one hand and the poker in the other and book it towards the sound of the shotgun. So you enter the house. Who is still downstairs with... Uh, did anyone stay downstairs with the mayor? No, oh, I went upstairs to see the dog. I think Thor <laughs> went upstairs behind Mac, just like shaking the box like a set of maracas, like <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a threatening fashion, like still like blazing with fire. I probably would have stayed downstairs since murder is still down there. Oh well, yeah, no, murder's murder's gone. Remember, murder murder left. Oh, um, remember, murder just vanished when when uh, after the after the brunch invitation. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, still, there's too many people going upstairs at once. Okay, yeah, no, if you're still downstairs, the mayor was, was turning to you and was getting ready to apologize to you, and then and then this shotgun went off, and she was like... Oh. <laughs> and so, Sha, you, you, you dive in here, and you see that there's this... So some lights are on down here, several lights. Um, and you see Shantano, and you see mayor... And you see... I don't know if you've met the mayor or not. I can't remember. Um... So you see this? Uh, yeah, wasn't it me and Shantano who went to? Yeah, it was just. Chat uh, it was just uh, yeah, it was just Aroshka and Shantano. Let me go yeah. ahead and uh, grab grab my my image of the mayor real quick for those who uh, once again want to see it. Um, so um, you see the in the in the mayor of Yestervale image that's uh, present in the uh, uh, in the roll twenty. Uh, you see a stern-looking woman, uh, not currently wearing her hat, um, but uh, long hair, favors blues, wearing blues, blue colors, um, and uh, she's just sort of like, ah, 
uh, as sort of as this sort of was going up, she looks and she's like, "Oh, is is this a friend of yours?" She says, turning to Shantano. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds so uncertain. I. Oh, thank goodness. I... Um. I, I tighten the buckle on my metal mask around my face and say, where is everybody else? Oh, this one. What was the yeah. shot? <laughs> there, there's a... You don't know? There, there's a third one up there. there. There's one upstairs. They they went after it. Yeah, they're going to deal with one of the bugs. Uh, Shaw just looks at Shaw no, and like gets like this really exasperated look that you can only see in her eyes because the rest is covered by those masks. It's just like, oh, and runs up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> so I think um, as you're just sort of running up and uh, you're probably going to come upon this scene of uh, Mac and Vor and Arushka um, in the study. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, and Niles is here as well. Uh, the, the Niles is the name of the dog, uh, who I'm presuming right now, Arushka is standing near and, uh, interacting with. Um, I'm petting the dog much like I'm currently petting this cat. <laughs> <laughs> Please imagine. And Mac is currently holding a smoking shotgun. <laughs> this, this feels like a really beautiful, like, Renaissance painting. Like, you've got, like, the diagonal, like, Mac with the, with the gun, like, shooting the thing. And then there's a rush cut, or petting the, the creepy psychic dog. And then there's Vor on fire holding the box, shaking it like a curly like, look over her head in a very threatening manner. <laughs> Yeah, I think Shaw spins into the room like Black Widow style, like, you know, in the Black Widow stance, uh, you know, side lunge with the battle fan and the poker and then looks around and like nothing is happening and stands up and says, I'm late, aren't I? Puts the fan away. Depends on your definition of late. I, I like your hear- moxie, though. Help, are you okay? Is everybody okay? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. He says as he's sort of scratching. <laughs> I was gonna be like, oh. Mike got shot, but he's okay. Yeah. <laughs> All good. Oh! Yeah, there's some holes in his shirt. They're not actually <laughs> in their injured. Just got shot. It's fine. Uh, 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 Alright. Um... I'll kind of do this, like, move towards Mac, like I'm going to check their wounds and then realize that they're fine and move back and do that a couple times and then <laughs> look around awkwardly and then see the eyeball dog and be yeah. like, oh, He's very happily oh, wagging his tail. Aren't you adorable? Yeah. <laughs> He's very happily wagging his tail and you sort of hear this very, the, psychically you sort of hear... <laughs> <laughs> I like that it doesn't have a mouth and nevertheless manages to pant. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's psychic. You know, yeah. you just hear the sound in your head. That's right. Oh, Vor, Vor will shake the box again once more for good measure and then crack the and then crack the corner of it open again and be like, Mac. You want me to shoot them? No, I wanted to put that one in here with no, the other he ones. Murdered that one. Well, yeah, the, the that, third that one, one is, is the, the third one was blasted apart because I, I did shoot. Oh, that's true. I, you shot at close range of the shotgun. The third one is Never in mind. many pieces. Um, yeah. I mean, I suppose we could put one of the pieces in there as sort of a, a thread. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Let's do that. Oh God. <laughs> like, do you think the others are creeped out by our? Um, meaner sides as as he's putting that in do you think they'll eat the dead parts i mean if they do i guess that's not the intention but i don't think it hurts anything i just want them to be scared shakes the box again (laughs) i mean to be fair they did threaten well, and they, they've got the whole town wrapped up. They 
have. I think that the town figured it out too. I saw an angry mob and I'm pretty sure that they figured out that there are these these insidious that have been going after them because they looked very distressed. Mm. Uh, mm, yeah, that mm-hmm. wasn't that was not what they're mad about. Mm, no, one of the oh. one of the one of the commands that the insidious were given out was that uh, that we were dangerous and that we needed to be dealt with. <gasps> How dare they! Right? It's okay. We're gonna fix this. We're gonna get the third one, and then they'll all forget that they hate us. Yeah. But Ergo shakes the box again. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to get the third one, and then we're going to deal with Blaylock, and then, uh, no, have brunch. All's well that ends well. Yep. So, third one. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, Goodman Chase. And Mac will leave the shotgun in the study. Okay. It's a good spot for it. (laughs) Don't need that anymore. I'm just going to take off like a belt or something. I assume I have something like that. Boar wears a lot of suits. And then like wrap the belt around this box so that the lid can't come off of it. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that's a good, it's a good idea. Um... Should we find Abel? Abel Wellison, he's staying with Shay. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Maybe we won't have to break in. Okay, maybe we will have to break (laughs) in. I mean, it's kind of fun. We'll see if he's in a house full of these things. I'm not sure he's still our friend, but we can try. Uh, we'll play it by ear. Yeah, walk and talk. And, you yeah. know, Mac will make his way down the stairs. Right. Sorkin mode engaged. Uh, so actually, <laughs> as you, uh, you've been having this conversation, um, but uh, Chantano and uh, and the mayor have been talking a little bit, or the, the mayor is talking to Chantano, the mayor is saying, uh... I'm very sorry about this afternoon. It wasn't that wasn't entirely me. Oh, you mean when you tried to poison me? I was trying not to. Um, that's why I. That's why I, I. Said it went off. It was all I could think to. To say to fight the suggestion. I'm I'm very sorry. Um. I, you have to understand, I, initially my thought was, the only way that I could think around it is that it was, it was letting me do things that were violent, it was letting me do things that were murderous, and I held on to that thought, the thought of, well, there's, there's a man that is connected to them in some way, this Balak. And I thought, since he's coming by tomorrow, I would... The only way that... I know, I'm sorry, I know how twisted this sounds, but it the only way I could think to free us of this was to... See if I... That got around these suggestions was to... Hand him a cup of arsenic tomorrow morning. But... Thankfully, I don't have to do that now. Thank you so much. Okay. I I can actually I I'm actually myself again. I've never been poisoned before. I don't know if I can be, so probably should need to test it out at some point, but maybe not oh. today. Oh, no yeah, no, I I I mean you Do you do that kind of thing? Like, do, do like, poison immunity type things where you try to... Is that a Vizlai thing? Find out, right? (laughs) I think this will be the point at which people are coming down the stairs. I... I'm not sure. I I don't know. I don't know. But no, we've been held in this... 
this we've been compelled to give all of our ice to Balok when he comes through once a week. Yeah, oh. we noticed. So if we take care of Balok, then I can have some magic ice for dessert. You, you can have as much as you can carry. Sweet. That was the reward we were promised. That's true. That was kind of why we came here. Mm. No, absolutely. I. Yes, the. We tried to. Oh uh, yes, the. Uh, I think. Yes, I think. Uh, that uh, yeah, Bristol asked. Just as it was sort of settling in, Bristol asked, um, asked Jonas to to get a message out, or suggested, and then then they got Bristol. After that, there are I think I think about nine more of them outside of this place, outside of. That, that I'm aware well, of. We have good news, maybe. Maybe? That um, we just have to get rid of one more idea in somebody's head, and then they'll all go away. Oh. For at least a year and a day. That's good to know. Great. Uh, who, who do you need to get? Do you know? Uh, uh, yeah, we do. Um... I, Eris, can't remember. Was Abel? Good person, Abel? Good, good, good person, person, Shay. Shay. Mm. Aroshka's going to say that, because it's just me, Eris, that can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shay. Of course. That makes sense. Um, Shay is one of the... Uh, is one of the biggest stakeholders in town. Um. Uh, hey. God, I hope I remember this correctly. I, I, did I write it down? Wait, let me check to see if I wrote it down. Did I write it down? I did not. Um, <laughs> so I hope this is correct. I think, didn't I say that Shay was... Uh, Shay's family operates the vineyard? Mm. I thought I said that. I thought Shay did something with a mind. Maybe not. No, wait. Taylor. They are a tailor. What I wrote down is this. Someone operates a vineyard, and I forget who it was. But I didn't write that down, because I am a fool. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, yeah, Groden and... Uh, Groden and Faraday have a stake in the mine, and also the hotel. And also and also Groden is the blacksmith, so they, they've just had their fingers and everything. Um... <coughs> But, um, yeah, I, I, I mentioned something about a vineyard, and it's gone now. It doesn't matter. That's okay. Um, yeah, so Shay and, uh, Shay and Nora live together in this, um, in, uh, do I have the city map on the thing? Maybe. No. Um, on kind of the, uh, the west end of town. Yeah, northwest, northwest part of town. And uh, maybe they also have something going on with vineyards over there, but there's something that's, for some reason, for some reason, vineyards are in my head. Anyway, because um, <laughs> I haven't had enough wine lately. That's probably what it is. Oh dear. Oh, no. Hopefully reality will reassert itself shortly. Um, we have, uh, as, uh, as we, we are experiencing the internet. <laughs> um, but, uh, but in the meantime, let's go over, uh, let's, let's change windows. Um, yeah. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, uh, Aris will be back shortly. Um, 
but uh, at this at this point, what uh, what would you folks like to do? Um, I would like to ask the mayor real quick if she had. Well, first, I would introduce myself to the mayor and apologize for bursting into her home. Certainly. Um, and then um, I would say, uh, but you you know this good person, Shay. Do you have any advice on what you think would be the best way for us to approach them? Well, they are. Um... Hmm. Yeah, actually, Jim's going to draw a card uh, to uh, to to help with this to help with the answering of this question. Interesting. Okay. All right. All right. So the the card we are seeing now is card number eight. Um. The the mysterious rune. I can't remember if we've had this one recently. I think we may have. Um, but I'll go ahead and read it out here. Um, let me go ahead and let me go ahead and do, do a quick thing uh, here, just to make sure. Let me do, do a quick message. Uh, Let me just check here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We're, we're dialing back in. We're dialing back into reality here. Hello. <laughs> My computer just turned itself off um, randomly for no reason. That's not good. Back now. That's not good when that happens. Um, let me quickly rearrange everyone so that we are we are back where we need to be. And uh, then, then re as, re as reality slowly reasserts itself, I you didn't miss much. I just drew a card. Oh, um, good. Myster the mysterious rune. The mysterious rune. The mysterious rune. <laughs> words are spells, and spells are words. Uh, runes encode words. They hide them in plain sight. Store them. If you can decipher the rune, you gain its meaning and thus its power. Those who scribe a rune, or even those who hold the book or other object the rune marks, are its masters. The Secrets family holds the mystery of a rune along with all its hidden meanings. It is not an unknowable truth, but a secret that can be learned, though it's likely a difficult and dangerous one. In divination, generally, this is considered a card of good fortune by Vizlai and bad fortune by Nans. There's mystery afoot. There's something important that can be discovered if the person in question looks for it. Specifically, looking for something in a book is a good idea after this card is turned. Um, it says, okay. I thought we didn't get this before. Yeah, yeah we have had this recently. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, what, what she will tell you, as far as a good person Shay goes, um, well, they had... Uh, they had been coordinating recently something with uh, as something with Bristol. They had just as soon as these insidious, as soon as the insidious got hold of Bristol, um, they were trying to work on something. They've got. They've been talking to. There's another Vizlay in town. I believe. Could be a Vizlai. Actually, I'm not sure. Uh, because they haven't really made themselves very known, and I was suggested not to worry about it. Uh, but there is... Shaw flips through her sketchbook and says, Hester? Could be. Um, I... It's, again, I was told not to look into it or think about it. 
but I have occasionally seen them with a dark, sort of, a dark figure, um, sort of covered in, uh, sort of different, uh, looks like, uh, cloths, uh, cloak, a cloak or, uh, cloth scraps. I'm not, I didn't get close enough to be able to see. I suspected there of Isla because I thought there was, I don't know, they had an air about them. Oh, it's a good thing we don't have any sort of restrictions on butting into other Isla business. Sure. Yeah, none at all. We're definitely, possibly, really well known for doing specifically that. <laughs> So this specialty. This, this other Bislay is somehow involved in this deal between Bristol and Good Person Shay? Possibly. I I saw them together a few days ago. Draped in fabric. Yes. Uh, Dark fabric. Yes. Uh, it's sort of sort of swaddled in it, very um, very concealing. Sort of wrappings. Uh, oh. I sort of give a sideways glance to Shot now, like. <laughs> Sounds like a description of your friend. All right, well, we'll I guess we'll see what we can do with that. Just be careful. I, I don't know what... Uh, yeah, I, d I don't know exactly what it is that uh, is going on with that. Um, but... Sure, it's nothing. They're aware. The, the, the Insidious, I think, are aware that you're on the move and that this is all happening. So just be careful. We should go yeah. fast. Yeah, let's go. Uh, one more question before we go. Does the town have condensed milk and bananas for uh, <laughs> shaved ice? Um, most of what we have we produce here. The climate's not quite right for bananas locally. We occasionally get them. We might have some. Um, we usually have to import them. Uh, might have some condensed milk, possibly. I don't like that answer to me. It's, I, I, I can't be sure. I'm, is there I'm sure is there is there some sort of like now. is there like some sort of alchemical thing you're going to do? Is that yes, it's okay. very important for eating. <laughs> I can. I mean, I if it's, I if, if if it's vital. I mean, I can I can have. I can try to look into it. Um, just be careful as where you're going around tonight because it's I they had me rile up the citizens. I'm gonna have I need to I need to talk to them. I need to tell them. Anyone who's not already got those things in their head to stand down. Um so I need to take care of that first. But then Um Yes. Just bring a light, you know, if you Yes, that's right, they don't like the light, do they? Of course. Again, I can't thank you all enough. I. It's been a nightmare. The the last week or two. Well, hopefully it will be over soon. Um, and on that note, we'll um head out. Excellent.
Excellent. Go ahead and do a thing here. Okay. All right. Um, so let me uh, let me just grab something real quick. I just want to make sure that I've got the appropriate information here in front of me. Which I hopefully have in front of me. As, uh, as we head over. Sorry, grabbing nine million things real quick. <laughs> All right. Okay. So you are um, you are heading over. Um, and uh, you're going to, I believe, be so heading up in sort of northwest toward uh, toward Nora and Shay's house. Is that correct? All right, all right, excellent, excellent. So you're able to uh, pretty much avoid most of the uh, most. You're able to avoid the angry mobs that are out. Um, <laughs> you see that they have. Um, that uh, they have gotten down to, uh, you know, you sort of, you, you can tell where they are because they're very loud, as you sort of are avoiding sort of the the, the middle north part of the uh, part of the area. A lot of a lot of a uh, lot of anger and uh, and and rowdiness happening around the hotel, um, and uh, so you will ultimately. Uh, as you as you head west and sort of sort of the the town slopes a bit, um, that uh, you're able to make it uh, through the streets and back alleys uh, to this house. Um, let me see. It's uh, it, it's fairly unassuming. Um, it's not a not a big house. It's um. So this is again very very rustic looking, much like the uh, the rest of these. Um, these 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 places. Um, it has a has kind of a has a fairly uh, slightly bigger yard than. Uh, it's it's a little bit bigger than the houses around it. A bigger yard. Um, there's kind of uh, it's kind of like a haystack motif in the yard itself, um, as though they are they do some degree of agriculture in addition to whatever else they do. Um, which actually it's it's also this this house as you can see part of the house it looks like it says tailor shop. Um, And so you're gonna, you're, so you, as you see this sort of kind of green awning, uh, the house itself does not look at, ha it, you know, there's, there's a little bit of light flickering from inside, but not a lot. What would you like to do? Is it obscenely late? It's not obscenely late. It's still early evening. Um, I don't think you said we would visit. That is true. 
I need to figure out... I need to figure out if someone is noticing something. <laughs> As in if someone in the house is noticing us? You have, or... you have an ice jaguar. Uh, I keep... I must remember you have an ice jaguar. Um, also, as you're as you're heading up to the, let, let me also mention as you're heading up to the house. Um, so, uh, so Ivelisse is going to come back in a moment, but uh, also um, Sagan is going to f flat back in and uh, and sit once again, uh, come over to sit again on Max's shoulder, and uh, looking a little bit. Feathers are a bit ruffled, as it were. Um, he's like, okay, I confused them for a while. <sighs> nah, they... They're up at the hotel now. Oh, good. He's just going to smooth up the feathers. Oh, oh, thanks. thanks, boss. Um, I think that... Uh, let me, uh, let me let me look at a thing. Yes, yes. So this is when Evelise is going to kind of perk up, and we'll turn back around to Mac. Kazunte, uh, Evelise will turn back around to Mac and uh, and say, "There is something about." I can smell they're insidious in the house, but there's something else here. Oh. But it's... Hmm. It's a little difficult to trace. I think it's trying to conceal itself somehow. Oh, that's not good. I would like to not walk into an ambush. I'm just saying that because I wanted to manifest it. You know. Oh. oh yeah, that's no, that's that's totally how it works. I do that all the time. Think hard about not walking into the ambush. <laughs> no, Vor, Vor literally manifests things and has done that in the past. That is true. Like that's very true. Hundred percent. That's how it works. If you believe hard enough. If you believe hard enough, you can make it real, Mac. All right. I will relay the message to everyone as to what uh, Ivelisse is saying. There's something hidden. Does it seem related to the insidious well we, we did get the impression that the insidious weren't exactly just working alone it's true oh. can we well, do we'll that light have... thing again to uh you know melt all the shadows away Oh, I have a thing if we want it. Um, Shaw pulls out a, a red and black mad stone from her pocket and flips it around and says, this can be on fire whenever we need. Oh, Andy. Good. Oh, well, that'll work. Then we'll just do that and I can save my magic for other, in case we need it later. Should I do it before we go inside, though? I figured maybe I would... Wait, I'm not sure they'd let us in the house with a big ball of fire in my hand. Um, well, I, I don't think they would let us into the house anyways. Um, oh, I thought we'd just knock on the door and say we were here to visit Abel. Do you really think they'll let us in? I mean, we know that the Insidious have given, are trying to hunt us down and do bad things to us. Maybe they think that we don't know. Well, no, no. I don't know which is stronger, mind control or country hospitality. <laughs> mm, this is it's a fair point. Say. That's really hard to say. Very good point. Very good point. You, 
But, you know, I think you would feel bad if we did not uh, at least attempt a more hospitable approach here first. We can open the door we and did, see how it goes. We yeah. did try last time. It, we just got told no. Oh. So we ignored it. Okay. Well. I, probably prudent if we don't all stand, stand immediately in front of the door. That okay. way, if things go poorly, then we can... Uh, we're not all in the line of fire. Yeah. Sorry. I'm 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 going to be uh I'm going to my attention's gonna be taken up for a moment. We got a bunch of spam. That's fine. Um. Well, I, I, I I'm the one who talked to Abel last and said that we would come visit. So I'll, I'll go first. And I'll just hold the stone in my hand. And if I need it, I need it. Yeah. Keep it in your pocket or something. So you can just grab, pull it out if you need it. Well, put it in my left hand so I don't have to shake with it. Yeah. Good idea. Then you can activate it instantly. Yes. And Mac is going to cast Flesh Mail again and stand to the right of Shaw. Okay. Um, she, for all of her competitiveness, looks at you and says... Thank you for having my back. And uh, knocks on the door. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you will also notice that, uh, uh, as this is going, I will say, to be fair, Ivelisse is kind of looking around as though it's like, as though as though the thing they're referring to might be out outside somewhere is what they're sort of, sort of, sort of looking back and oh. looking around. It's sort of is what they're, it's out here somewhere, I think. I'm not sure. But uh, they can't get a direction. It's the, so they've been kind of wandering back and forth. But uh, Shaw is going up and knocking on the door. And uh, <clears throat> after a few moments, you hear. Um, you, you hear it sort of, there's like been conversation happening inside. You hear it's like there's, there's someone you know, sort of in there. Um, and, uh, after a few moments, uh, you see sort of a, uh, the, the door will open and, uh, there's a tall, thin woman. Um, And uh, sort of dressed in black. Um, we'll, uh, we'll answer the door. Um, and uh, looks at uh, looks at you and is like, "Hello, can I help you?" Uh, good evening. Are are you good woman Nora? Yes, yes, that's right. Oh, pleasure to meet you. I've heard so much about you. Uh, we're here to see Abel Wesselman. Uh, we met on the train and said that we would come by and call. Abel, yes, yes. Uh, Abel is uh, Abel is my cousin. And, yes. And uh, he and... Uh... Good. Wait. Emma. The... Emma. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I wrote it down somewhere, but it's not here. Um, yes, he and... Yeah, he and Emma are... Uh staying with us uh do come in oh thank you and uh she will step aside and let you into the house gulp um i will walk into the house <laughs> is anyone else oh, going yeah. in as well yeah or? i was gonna follow yeah i'll follow said we me as well And uh, so let's see, Shantano and Aroshka are going in. Is every, and what about uh, Mac and Vor? Yeah, I'm gonna go in. Okay. Oh, I'll be in in a moment. Um, I'm going to uh, check things out here a bit more. Okay. So Mac is going to. Uh, to, to look around the grounds or what have you? Yeah, he's going to um, 
you know, instruct Sagan to fly up overhead and scout around the house okay. on the roof. And uh, he's, he and Ivelisse are going to um, see if they can find what he was she was sensing. Excellent, excellent. Okay. So, let me, let me look at a thing. Okay. So, uh, the, uh, the challenge for this is, is seven. Um, you're getting a bonus of, uh, I'm giving you a bonus of two, one from uh, Ivelisse, one from Sagan, uh, as they're helping you on this. And so you, right now you need a five or better. Um, uh, what do you want to throw at this? Mecca is just going to look around and mutter. Now, if I was trying to ambush someone who was coming into this place, where would I begin? <laughs> I'm going to use game theory again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the two, but you and Vora are not together, so you're only going to get whatever you have. In it. But are we not, like, psychically close? Like, <laughs> like surely Vor can feel Max mind nearby. I, yeah, I mean it's it, it's it's they have a bond. Yeah, and Vor reads mind. Like she can feel. Like she can help Mac. Game theory, unfortunately, doesn't extend. The game theory skill, unfortunately, does not extend to the. Uh, to, 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 I to the, uh, to, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> To tactical defense. <laughs> to, okay, what, a, to the, uh, what about if I... <laughs> Unfortunately, it does not extend to trying to convince the GM of anything. Uh, okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> Hard I, tried, I like it. It's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. So, so my base is two for game theory. Okay. So we will bring that down to a three or better. God damn it! I, I really wow. need an extra one. Uh... Can I spend a sword ledge to reroll? Is that allowed? <laughs> I don't believe that's in this one. Like, I'm remembering a thing from. Let me double check. Hang on. I don't think we have rerolls in this one. But I remember it being in the, in the cipher system. So that's why that's why I look askance for just a second. I don't th I I Let me check. So you can add enhancement to roll in your line and so you cannot add a sort of No, I think that's just to uh I think that's just for the initial roll. Anyone else? Anyone else remembering anything about rerolls, or am I? Or, I thought okay, sort of like belatedly. Could I? Could I have used the perception beam? Oh, I completely oh. forgot I had those. You do have perception, Bene. Yes, yes, I will allow that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. I'll just knock that down one. Do you want to bring? That's nah, fine. Yeah. Um, so that will bring it down to a two. So you're so you're good there. Okay. This means you're going to find this more quickly, which is good. For who? <laughs> so you're going to find a thing as you are... As you're stepping through, and this uh, this means also you will not be taken by surprise. Oh. As you're going to step around, and you're looking, and you realize you spot something... As, as uh, you're getting constant communication from your, your two friends, we're kind of telling you where things are. There is movement across the street in an alley across the street. You have noted that there is something, and it's, it's pretty dark over there. But it's like there's someone there for a moment, and then they pull back. Oh, well. 
this is probably the worst idea that uh, Mac could possibly have at this point. Uh, Mac is going to investigate, and as he's crossing the street, he's going to send a psychic missive of war and just say, <laughs> I think I found what uh, Ivelisse was looking for across the street. Um... Now, let me, uh, since time has passed, we're going to go inside, and we'll, I'll let you know, Vor, when you get this message. Okay. Um, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to hop inside real quick. Um, and we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be cutting back and forth here. Um, step inside. Everyone's inside. Uh, it's a nice, warm, sort of cozy area. There is, uh, the front of the house is uh, more the tailor shop. Um... I think, but you, uh, yeah, so, so you've got two ways you can go. You can go one way and you go just directly into the tailor shop and then there's a, there's a way to just sort of back through to the house portion. Uh, so up front in sort of the tailor shop area, um, you can see to, to the one side you see, yeah, um, yeah, okay. So you've got the tailor shop and then you've got sort of what looks like a little living room and, uh, where there, and, and a dining room. And you can see that um, you hear activity back in the dining room, uh, up front in the living room. Um, there is, um, you see Emma, who stands up, recognizes you, and steps forward to where you are. Uh, you will note in the tailor shop area, which you can still see because you haven't moved very far in yet, um, you can see... Uh, Nora is stepping back along into it, and on the opposite end of the of the tailor shop, currently sort of working with. There are a number of mannequins in here. Um, not many. They're not like they're not plastic mannequins. They're like wooden. Um, and uh, with mannequins or forms. Hmm. Mannequins or forms. They'd be forms, actually. More likely, be forms if it's uh, if it's what we're thinking. Um, like just the torso to yeah the torso to put stuff like measuring out garments on yeah that's more what I'm thinking of Um, as far as that go there's probably one mannequin like in the back that has the head and the the feet and everything Um, because there's got to be at least one but um, (laughs) there um, yeah the rest there there's a form sort of a coat and uh, you see that um you know, like bolts of thread and what have you in here in the tailor shop area, um, and you see that near one of the uh, one of the forms, where um, y- you see that uh, stuff is being put away, and you see Abel is here, um, taking taking a coat off of one of these forms, um, and is like putting stuff away. Um, and as you all step in. Um, so Emma is the first one to see you, and uh, just sort of steps forward. Oh, hello! It's good to see you all again, uh, Abel. And Abel looks up, and he's he looks around. Oh, hi. Um, uh, hello. Good evening. Uh, we we had some time and had said that we would come by and visit. Oh yes, yes, I remember. How has your stay been? Very exciting. Uh, and uh, Nora just sort of looks, o- looks over. Ah, friends of yours. Yes, yes. Uh, these are uh, folks from out of town from uh, from Saturine. Ah, delightful. We were uh, just getting ready to put on some... Uh, we were just putting on some stew. Um, are you hungry? Uh, well, we wouldn't want to be a bother. There is quite a lot of us, but... Oh, that's quite all right. I'm sure we can uh, we we can put enough together. And there, I'll uh, I'll get some potatoes going. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you so much. Would you two entertain our guests while? Uh... And she says, looking at Abel from Abel to Emma. While I go and uh, have a word with Shay. Sure, absolutely. Um, and uh, Nora will move start drift effortlessly toward the back of the uh and and uh, toward the kitchen and uh, Abel will sort of step forward 
Hey, so... So, how are you... Where's your, uh, where's your friend? Oh, Mac, he just had some things to finish up, and then he'll be right over. Um, how are you doing? Um... Oh, good, good, good. I uh, was a little, uh... was a little tired, uh, last night getting in, but, uh, I'm doing all right now. Oh. He just sort of looks over at Emma, Emma sort of nods. Yeah, there, um, Emma had a lot of, uh, had a lot of work to have to sort of sort out today. Yeah, people kind of were a little bit, uh, uh just, that, that just their thing that happened back in the kitchen was just very, very strange. And, uh, so there was just a lot of, uh, there, there was a bit of an adjustment. Not everyone was, uh, uh, not everyone was terribly happy. They've been kind of getting a little rowdy. Uh, oh, kind of getting a little rowdy, goodness. Emma says. And uh, I think this is the point at which, uh, Vor, you're going to receive Mac's message. Ah. Um, okay. So, is it... I know this is, like, Mac has the psychic missive ability, but, you know, I can speak mentally with anyone being in close range. And if I spend one more sorcery bending, I can increase it to long range. So is it, can I, can I establish some kind of contact with Mac here? Yeah, sure. Using that ability? Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, I, I don't know what this feels like from Mac's perspective. This probably isn't the first time that you felt bored just kind of like settle into the back of your eyeballs somewhere. Um, but uh, then you, Maggie, you would hear Vor's voice in your head just saying, uh, do you need help? at all? You, you good? I'm not sure yet. I think I'm going to try to flush it out first and see what we're dealing with. Okay. Any any indication of what it is? No. But I feel like I'm about to walk into a trap. Okay, but let's... We're, we're manifesting that that's not going to happen. This is true. I mean, I do have my uh, familiar and my um, ice leopard here to uh, back me up a bit. But uh, I mean, things are tame in the house at the moment. So no. it, there... well, we've just been invited to have some food. Although it's not brunch, so you know, who cares? Um, <laughs> but uh, so if you need if you need assistance, I... scream. Can do. Okay, I'll 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 be lurking, and I'm like I'm gonna take like the dial on the telepathy from like ten back down to like two. <laughs> uh, Nora has stepped back in and has said, "Oh, come on back." I will follow after. Is she taking us into the kitchen? Yeah, the dining room. Dining room. So, so Shaw is going into the dining room. Is anyone else going into the dining room? Yeah, I'll head over. Yeah. I'll go, I'll come up the rear. Like, I'm like poised to go. If Mac, if I hear screaming of the physical or psychic variety, I am poised to good to go help Mac if needed. Yeah. Abel's like rubbing his hands. Oh, this is going to be good. Um, and uh, as you all enter the dining room, um, it's a big sort of, it's, it's a, it's, it's not hugely appointed, but it's a, a decent size table. It's a good big size table. Um, and you see places have been set um, for, for you folks. Is anyone sitting down or are you uh, just... Uh, or are you going to hang out a little bit first? I'd like to loom in a corner. Looming's good. Yeah. <laughs> Has our host sat? Um, not yet. No, no. They're they're waiting for yeah, you. Shaw won't sit. Shaw okay. will Sha will stand <laughs> by a chair. <laughs> yeah. Nora is uh, just sort of uh, sort of near the door to the kitchen. She says, "Oh, now you must tell us about yourselves." Oh, here we are. And uh, the door opens, and you see beyond uh, an individual 
uh, in the kitchen, uh, who must be a good person, Shay. Um, average build and height, has an eye patch. Um, again, grayish hair, just smiling. They, they're, they're smiling, and they're carrying a big, uh, big sort of iron pot. And there's some bowls set down on the table here. It looks like they're going to ladle some stuff, some soup into. Um, it's coming out on the, on the table. Um, uh, uh, oh, oh, wonderful, wonderful. Have I got something for you? Well, I'm going to cut over to Mac real quick. Uh, Mac, <coughs> you are, uh, you're in the alley. And do you have a light source with you? Do I have a light source? Do I have a light source? Do, do you? I have a light source? Do you does, have does, a light source? Does saying it with different emphasis change reality? <laughs> is, part of, is this part of manifesting a light source? Hey, light source. Do you have a light source? <laughs> <laughs> Can a testament of suns be a light source? <laughs> I think there is something you can do with it. I, I'm trying to remember. I, I mean, I know that there are powers it. that, uh, like, when you get to a certain level, um, there are, you're actually allowed to have powers associated with your uh, Testament of Sons. Wasn't there something that you tied to your Testament of Sons where... Uh, <laughs> um, wasn't there something Wasn't there something that you tied to your Testament of Sons that uh, allowed you to... Uh, that, that, that it did something it, it had an appearance i did it glow i can't remember i honestly don't remember I... there, there's something you did with it and i can't i just i just can't for the life of me recall what it was but i'm sure i will i'm sure i will remember sooner <laughs> or later um if i can figure it out okay that's enough of that um <laughs> but um, <laughs> um. <laughs> Well, Do you have, have a light source? Best. Theoretically? I mean, I have uh, a handheld video game console from the gray. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Does it produce light? It's backlit. <laughs> okay. I have used my phone many a time as a light source. I would argue that a video... Is a video game console not the same as a phone? Well... I was is it like, like they have really old Game Boys didn't have any light. Is it a retro <laughs> video game console or is it more of a present day video game console? I said it was a Nintendo 3DS. Yeah, so those are backlit, yeah. Are those yeah, those back those are things where you can kind of light shine. Yeah, I figure you can kind of shine the light of the uh I mean it's either that, I mean, you know, I do have the one of the sources of my power to provide a vessel for spirits is uh, the fact that I am connected to the Cathedral of Illuminism. That's that kind true. of like about light. I mean, that's. I am sure there's some branding going on, uh, whereby you could. I, it's it's a pin that you wear, right? You could uh, you could uh, make that sort of tap it and make it sort of glow or something like that. I could, but that would. Yeah, why not? But like you know, the downside of that is that it, it means that I am willing to take upon. <laughs> it, oh, it, it's yes. basically like turning myself um, on or available, like an Uber driver in that spirit. Oh yes, you know, that's true. Could, could use me as a. That's vessel. true. <laughs> so it's my so... taxi. <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta say, as far as my uh, as Max abilities are concerned, this is probably the very weirdest episode where all of this has now come up. But yes, so so why don't we go with that? And uh, th this is shame on me for not researching my testament of sons further. So opening yourself up to uh, to nearby spirits, eh? Um. Well, I mean, I can still approve or disapprove. But, oh, okay, uh, yeah, so you, you get... You know, uh, the fact yeah. is is that, um, you know, people talking to me while I'm trying to do something is probably yeah. not the... Yeah, uh, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, so you turn off the off-duty light, um, and, um, the, um, and the, the light itself, the light on the... The light showing your, uh, your on-call number lights up. 
Um, and you can now see into the alley. And looking down as you're entering, you don't see anyone immediately, It's uh, but the alley goes back a bit of a ways and turns in a couple of directions. But you step in, and just getting a little of a bit of a ways in, there are some crates here, you get beyond the crates, and you see something you recognize. Oh, no. On the floor of this alley, on the ground, is a goetic summoning circle. Let's cut back into the house. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that's just cruel. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Did you want to send a message or anything or say anything before? Uh, can I quickly identify? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> what level of a summoning <laughs> circle it is? <laughs> what level of summoning circle? Yes. Yeah, you're looking at it. Looks to be about a three. I can handle a three. Yeah. <laughs> so, back inside the house. I'm absolutely sure you can. Back inside the house. Shay. Good person Shay sets the pot down on the table. Is anyone doing anything? Uh, I'll sit down. Yeah. I'm gonna just gonna continue to loom and also have no intention of eating anything from people who might be about to poison us. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'll hold um, up the bowl. In fact, I'm actually, is there a way for me to like sidle a little closer to good person Che? Yeah, you can come um, around. So I was going to try and give you an opening, um, especially given the card we have on the table. I was going to be like, oh, good person, Che. I was I was just speaking to Bristol this morning. Um, and and oh, yes. uh, Bristol mentioned that, that you might need something for the project you're working on together out of this book. Um, and then I pull the book out that we have with all the, the mm. creatures of the area. And then look at Vor and say, do you remember what page it was? Oh, yeah. Um, I don't remember what page it was on. That's OK. I don't remember what page it is either. Um, I'm just absolutely making something up to get you close enough that yeah. you can try to pull the idea out of there. Yeah, head. I'll get like I'll get a little closer <laughs> on the pretext of this. Yeah. Be like, oh, yeah, I think it was page to make up a random oh. number. <laughs> And, and uh, then, and then, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna try to rip that idea. As rip you that are, right out. as you are, before you get there, <laughs> um, this is the point at which uh, Nora will say, well, "Will say, oh yeah, well, it's a, it's a special recipe. Yes, that it is." And as you are, as you begin, as you step closer, there's a little bit of tension. Shay lifts the lid off the pot. And uh, this is more or less, this is when, um, from out of the pot. Oh no. We have. Oh no. Oh my god, Jim, talk faster. <laughs> is one working. of the bugs in it? Three, no, oh no. Oh, uh, oh no. You see these. <clears throat> These spherical objects come drifting up, immediately up out of the pot, and you realize as the uh, the stew melts away from them, falls away from them, they're like two, two, three, four of these. They are. They look like eyeballs floating. Creepy. And. Uh, They are uh, rather immediately come bolting at you. At me? Uh, when you say you, is that all of us collectively? That's, that's or is roughly that... everyone here at the table, yes. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh, God. 
Uh, mm -hmm. What's sorry? What's that thing that you can do to like you can spend something to replenish like your sorcery? Because I had zero oh, previously. The recovery. Oh. Yeah. Can we say I did some recovery like on the way here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's like that's it's like you have. Yeah. Do I get the whole pool back, or you, you get a, one pool? Of your one case. pool. So it's like it's like, what is it? Is it's you, you get like four it's, of them? Is that right? It's, it's like two in. two that count count for one action, yeah. one that takes ten minutes, and one that takes one hour. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh... And so on the way, if you wanted to spend one on the way here, we can even say it was the ten minute one. I think you can do them out of order, if I recall correctly. Oh, uh, I'm immediately just instinctively, because I had it in my hand, going to activate this adrobatic flame in one hand, which is a red black madstone. The stone burns with a powerful flame, like a bit of burning phosphor until the next sun rises, but it gives off no heat and burns nothing it touches until you tell it to. Okay. All right. Excellent. Excellent. I don't know if that helps, but that's just what Shaw's going to do instinctively because she's not ah. in her hand the whole time. It's a, it's a, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm part of, I'm sorry, I didn't catch, quite catch the beginning of that. It's a light or a, uh, it's a, it? it's a, it's a mad stone. So it's a, it's an ephemera fire. object and it, mm -hmm. it's a, it basically is a, a, a ball of burning phosphorus okay. in mm -hmm. Shaw's hand. Okay. But you said it doesn't give off any heat. Until I make it. Until you make it. So oh, okay. I can, it says, well, it says, unless you wish it to. Unless you wish so. it to. Excellent. Okay, good. <laughs> um, I can burn this house to the ground if I need to. That's, that's perfectly But I fine. don't do it accidentally. I that's think just what's good to know. how I read that. So you kind of have, um, at this point, um, let me see. You're going to have uh, one of these trying to essentially swarm at each of you. Um, mm -hmm. And so I will need to come around and ask what everyone is doing. Okay. And I believe, um, Roshka, what do you have, you have a thing? Oh, I was going to say, I'm going to cast Refutation of Threat, which is a level three spell. It says, the next time I am attacked, the attack is transformed into something harmless. The spell affects the attack, not the weapon. So a knife transformed into a feather becomes a knife again immediately after that single attack is thwarted. So, yeah. Uh, whatever eyeball is coming at me is going to be temporarily turned into something else. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Good. Good. Um, um, so it's, uh, so the first thing, what level of, uh, what level of spell is that? Three. <laughs> Three. Okay. Yeah. Um, now this actually does have, this does have a resist ability. Um, so I believe there is a degree of, uh, I believe there is a degree of, hmm, I feel like there would be some kind of thing involved here. Um, I was trying to, it's just the next attack, right? It's, it's just, uh, the next attack. Only one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so like, if it attacks me, I can do this. And the one attack, that's why I was saying that. Okay. Like, yeah. The, the thing that's attacking gets transformed, but it only it doesn't like permanently affect the the, the thing. Yeah. So like if the eyeballs attacking me, it will be temporarily turned into something harmless, and then it will can go back to being a, a an eyeball and can attack me again if it wants to. Okay. But so this yeah, so one attack will be thwarted. It's going to. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to think in terms of like a field that you have up, but it also has a resist. Uh, ability, so I'm trying to think if I need you to roll something with this or not. What's uh, to try to overcome its resistance. Level. It would it would bring it up, so it's a level three, and uh, then it has plus four to resist. Um, so I think that uh, that would basically, if if you were rolling, you would need a four or better. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, since this is a thing that just lasts for one round, I'm inclined to think. Also, if, and it's it's a field you're putting kind of in place. You're casting it on yourself, so it's not really a question of. You see what I'm saying? It's a little. It's it's one of those strange, yeah. strange things. So I'm going to say that this thing's going to go ahead and just get delayed for a for a moment. Okay. Um, as it uh, as it swings toward you, 
Uh, it's basically, it's like, it uh, bumps up on you, turns into a glass eye, and falls onto the table and rolls. Uh, <laughs> rolls, but it's, it's kind of a big one, but it sort of turns and is rolling off the table. Um, Vora is closest to these things. Vora, what are you doing? Oh, I got this. Um, so I'm going to use one of my Shepherd's Minds abilities. Uh, I don't know what the name of this one is, but it's I give a mental command for an action that can be completed in one round and all within short range that I want to be affected will obey me. Um, in this case, that would be all the eyeballs, but also all of the good persons in the room. Excellent. And I'm just going to say freeze. Excellent. So what, uh, so... Um, so this is this is level five, mm -hmm. and it's magic. So I have plus one die. I need to roll here. Excellent. So, um, let me uh, let let me take a quick poll of everyone in the room. Um, <laughs> also, I will say that those of us who are watching, anyone who's watching, everyone in the room, and probably this would most likely be Shantano, um, though I believe that he's probably that that they've probably stepped away for a moment. Um, oh, there we are. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you will note that no one... Uh, so Shay and Nora and Abel do not seem surprised. Actually, they don't even seem to notice the eyes. Emma is sort of stepping into the back of the room, is freaking out a little seeing these things. <laughs> She's like, what the hell? Emma's the sister, right? Yes, Emma's the sister. Um... Fascinating. She just got here. No, she's been she's no, been she's here a been while, here. but uh, yeah. it works in the cafe we changed. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but it's possible there there are a number of reasons why, but it's most notably that she's not in she's not here in this house a lot. Um, so there's. It's basically we saved her because we are givers. She wasn't. She also was not snooping. That's the other thing. Uh, she didn't. She didn't suspect anything was wrong. Um, oh yeah, but uh, in any case, uh, so let's let's figure this out. Uh, these things are level three; they have a plus four to resist, so that's a total of seven. Um, <laughs> let me just check everyone. I think everyone else is probably also going to be less than that, but let me just double check them. Uh, good person Shay is level five and has a plus one to resist, so that's going to be six. a six. So that's going to be the next highest. So. It's okay. it's gonna you're you're basically it's the the seven is what we okay. are working against. So you, your spell is level five. That brings it down to a two. Yeah, and um, if you'll let me, my skill in understanding magic that lies outside the codified practices, which is sort of virtual stick, I have a level two skill in that. The funny thing about this, as has just been revealed in the narrative, um, this was a goetic summoning that brought these mm. things here. You figure that out pretty quickly <laughs> as you start to realize that it's like, you're not absolutely clear, but it's also, I don't know if, uh, if, if anything is getting communicated to you. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, it's either way. Uh, yeah. That in this case, this is a, it's, they got here by a codified practice. All right. So fair enough. Kind of the, my, know. my other, can I can I can I use this here skill would be um, I do have a level three skill in charm. So I'm just very naturally charming and they <laughs> want to obey me in addition to having to. How do you say freeze? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. I think Boar looks up with uh, well, Vor was coming in close, right, to be next to good person Che and sees like all these eyeballs come up and gives them her most winning smile. The smile that she get back in the gray she gave people whenever she won big poker tournaments, right? Uh, and had to go like smile for the press and she gives her most winning smile and then just says, Hello. just stay right there for one second. I'll be with you in a moment. Excellent, you got it. <laughs> So, you have frozen these eyeballs in place. 
Oh, and the people Rose in the room. And Rose. the people in the room. <laughs> Everyone in the room who is not a Vizlai at this point, because you were specifically targeting eyeballs and uh, good people. Um, are, uh, <laughs> eyeballs and good people. <laughs> eyeballs there's and a, good people. There's a band name for you. Our new, our new band that's gonna play at our brunch restaurant that we open. <laughs> Absolutely. And good people. So the eyeball, so the eyeballs and the good people are frozen. Yes. Um, and if you'll let me, I'd like to go ahead and lift that. Uh, lift the. Um, uh, I mean, if, if someone else wants to take an action, you want me to make. You want me to wait. That's totally fine. I'd like, but... uh, I'd like to go around real quick just to check sure. everyone else. Um. I was gonna say one of the eyeballs is currently an eyeball, is it? Yeah, one of the eyeballs is currently made out of glass, so it's it's held for a second, um, also in its own way. But I think the message will get through. Um, it stops rolling. <laughs> it's like on the edge of the table is about to roll off of it. Um, glass eyeball rolling menacingly in my direction. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's see, Shai, you prepared your stone when this thing came out. Yeah. Shant yeah, so Shantano, what did you do as your reaction here? Um. <clears throat> Let's see, so, so far they haven't done anything yet. They just rose up from the... They rose up there, they're, they're, they rose up and they were starting to, to bolt at each of you. And uh, and Vor told them all to to hold on a moment, and they're all frozen. Uh, I'll throw the soup bowl at them. <laughs> I was hoping for soup. And... Who are you throwing the the soup bowl at? Righteously annoyed. Um, uh, closest eyeball. The closest eyeball. Excellent. The one coming at you. Um, it's a level three, uh, so it does not have. Strangely enough. The, these eyeballs do not have any kind of, of uh, resistance to soup bowls. <laughs> it nice. Does have, it does have plus two to withstand, however, so that's probably actually going to count. Um, <laughs> wait, no, that's not the eyeballs. That's some, something else. No, they don't have that. Um, something else. That's ominous. What am I looking at? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I got to check something. Stand by. Oh, you know what? Never mind, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, no, they don't have that. Um So Uh so yeah, it's 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 right now a three or better. Um to to hit this thing. And is what that a physicality thing? How is it, how does that work? Uh, it could be yeah, physicality if you want to use phys physicality Benny, or if you you know if there's uh anything anything you want to throw at this? Literally. Uh, <laughs> survival. Okay, that'll count. You're, you're clearly <laughs> trying to survive. So you're doing that. Are you also are you also spending physicality or no? Uh sure. Okay, so that'll take it down to one or better. Eight. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, so yeah, you absolutely clock this thing um, with this bowl going flying saucer like across the room, smashes into into the thing, smashes it against the wall. It falls down and vanishes. Ooh. So now there are only three in the room with you. I'm going to hop outside to Mac for a moment. Uh, I don't know if there's any communication going on back and forth telepathically, but uh, uh, Mac, you're out in the alley. No spirits have approached you yet. What would you like to do? So I see a summoning circle, but I don't see anything else in here. Yeah, it's it seems that whoever drew this summoning circle is not... Um, you, you see that it's been broken, so some, the, the whatever was summoned was let out of it to do some task. Um, and there's probably the... The, uh, 
the individual. So this is the first thing that you've seen. Um, if there's an individual here, they're they're further back. They have they have. They may perhaps be be trying to step away or flee. All right. Uh, all right, Evilise. Uh, I think this might be too dangerous, so. time to hold up my end of the bargain. Uh, you are free to roam the city at Fair. your leisure. I thank you. And then it, uh, and then they dash off. And um, Mac is going to draw a summoning circle of his own. Okay. And he is going to summon a level seven spirit to uh, guard him. Okay. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, the, the, okay. So, yeah, so, um, just, just so you're aware, you could potentially at this point, if you want, you can still totally do this if you want. Sure. Um, but the, you could potentially still pursue whoever it is that's, uh, that's trying to escape at this point, if you so desire. Um, but if you stop to draw the circle, then they will probably get away. Oh, really? Okay. Um, in that case, uh, Mac is going to send Sagan ahead to, um, scout for him as he, uh, sprints down the alley. Okay. Um... Okay, okay, so you're going to go ahead and pursue? Okay. Um, yes, so Sagan's going to scout ahead. Um, also, just given that, did, did you want to hold on to Ivalice a little longer or no? Uh, yeah, I guess we'll just have Ivalice, um continue to follow as well. Okay, that, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind retroing that just simply because okay. I wanted to make sure it was clear. Okay, you're pursuing this. There is a dark cloaked figure that you can see as you make a turn that you are chasing after. You are now, you, you, you have found them. Um, and they are trying to escape through these back alleys. Um, as they're, they're trying to run from you. Um, if you want to do an action, you can also do an action. Okay, so Mac is going to uh, continue to pursue and uh, try to maneuver himself into a uh, throwing range uh, of this cloaked figure. Excellent. And uh, he's going to um, pick one of his throwing knives. Not the one that uh, was missing a hilt and handle. Just one of the ones that he mm -hmm. keeps on hand. And uh, he's just going to call out, I give this is your this is one warning you're either stop or uh i'm gonna use you for target practice ah. let's see nope they're gonna keep running okay so this is a So they have a, so they are level six. They have a two in withstand. So if you're going to do harm to them, then you're going to need an eight or better. Okay. So uh, we're going to use. We'll use an accuracy bean. Okay. We'll use my martial art, which is two. Okay. Oh, so that's seven five. down to five. Um, um, I think you've also got Sagan helping you as far as uh, chasing them down. So I'll give that also, I'll give you a one bonus of one for that. So that'll be four or better. Okay. We'll try to work with four. Okay. No. So, 
Yeah. So they are going to to uh, light out, and they're going to actually get to a point where they are. They dodge around the corner, another corner, and you're not seeing them at, at this point. They have. Uh, they appear to uh, you, you, as as you sort of you, you throw and you do and uh, you don't quite make contact. You pin a piece of. Uh, as their garments are flapping behind them, their 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 wrap, wrappings are flapping behind them. You throw the knife, and it pins uh, a piece of cloth to the wall, to the wooden wall that they pass, and it tears off. Um, and for just a split second, you see a face that you recognize that you've seen before um, as they bolt out and around. I'm going to go back inside the uh, inside the house. So we have we have three frozen floating eyes in the house. We have frozen people. For how long does this last? That, that's a question. Um, it doesn't specify. <clears throat> okay. So I'm just going to incline that as long as you're standing there doing it, then then probably we can hold them. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine it probably doesn't last too long, but yeah. what this is probably only a couple of seconds in real time as far as really she just needs a moment here to go ahead and get this uh, mem this royal brood suggestion out of good person Che. Okay. Um, yeah, uh -huh. if you want to go ahead and do that, that's... Uh, yeah, you can... yeah, so I'll just do the same thing I did to the mayor, which was the idea theft. Uh, you steal an idea from someone's mind. If you succeeded in action with their levels, the with their levels, the challenge, the level, the ability, the level of the ability is seven. Okay, um, and good person Shay has a six at this point because it's a uh, they're level five. They have plus one to resist, so you can just do it. Yeah. So Vor will just you know metaphorically just kind of go in there with the melon scooper and uh, the, <laughs> the mental melon scooper. <laughs> <laughs> just pull that idea right on out. Um, and I'll do the same thing that I did um, with the mayor as well, which is feed it to meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. meme's like, ah. the, the, the sepia, The sepia being inside your uh, your your gemstone is is delighted. Yes. As it's once again... It starts to light up a little bit. Getting to feed on lovely, lovely tragedy. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, so that is happening. Um, so you're doing that to Shay. Yeah. Um, and let's see, who else in here would like to do something while these eyeballs are frozen? I would like to punch a frozen eyeball. Excellent. <laughs> uh, preferably with a fan. So I guess I would like to slice a frozen eyeball. Good, good. How much do you have to throw against this? This is a level three being. Um, it is currently a mobile for what it's worth. It is worth. also currently a uh, mobile, so you probably would just it oh probably wouldn't be too too difficult. Yeah, I mean my battle fan is a plus two to damage, but that's not hit. I could uh -huh. I can spend uh, physicality for the hit. Uh, I feel like you can probably just hit the thing. It's frozen in midair. It's the only thing. Um, so like, it's immobile. It's not really going to take much to hit the thing. It does plus two damage. I think you can probably just do it. Um, is what okay. I'm thinking. Um, and, and unless there's anything specifically uh, you want to try and yeah. No, um, I'm really just battle slicing an eyeball. <laughs> That's not moving. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah hitting. It's not a problem. So <laughs> you bring up the fan. Slice through the thing and it vanishes. Okay. Um, back to where it, whence it came. Right. I forgot that um, one of my uh, apostate abilities that I mm -hmm. relatively recently acquired is called Combative Caster. All our spells inflict plus two damage. Does that only, like, that, wait, never mind. Well, yeah, I think that would only be if it ordinarily does damage. Ordinarily Typically, well, that would be fascinating case, for a number of reasons. We could find out in a minute, in a second here, because 
Alpha, well, no. Unless you want to adapt one of your spells to do damage, which is also possible. No, no, no. There, there are two um, eyeballs left. One is currently made of glass. I just want to stab one of them. Maybe not the glass one. <laughs> with, with, I, with my knife. Because another one of my uh, possibilities is... I don't know how that word is pronounced. Telestic? Telestic? Something like that. Strike. We inflict plus two damage to any weapon attack. Enhanced with magical energies. And I also have skills. Level one knife. <laughs> okay. And a knife. Well, I in also this situation, knife. that'll be just fine. You lunge at the thing. You stab into it, and it vanishes. Yay! There's one eyeball left. It is glass. It is it is leaning on the edge of the uh, of the table. Um, Shantana, what would you like to do? How many are left? One. We just dropped off the edge of the table. Uh, yeah, I mean, if there's still several, or yeah, uh, plating around, I'll throw chuck another bowl. Worked last time. I just you can just grab another bowl and like. <laughs> you all hear a smashing sound as this uh, this this glass eyeball shatters into many pieces and also vanishes. So, let me now, very, very quickly, because we've gone over, um, I'm just going to head back out to Mac real quick. Uh, Mac, uh, this individual that you are, uh, that you, that, that you have seen, um, you now connect back with where you saw the name Hester before. Um, and you realize that this is someone who... Uh, you actually got to... You never really interacted with them much, but uh, they were at the... Uh, you know, they, they, they're a goetic. They've, you've seen them at the, uh, at the main building. You've also seen them occasionally at the hostel. Do I know the name? Yes, this is Hester. Okay. Um... And he is, uh, since the new sphere, as I have researched it now, <laughs> um, since everyone is connected to the new sphere and the psychic missive goes to through the new sphere, he is going to send a psychic missive to Hester. And um, it's going to say, you have some explaining to do. Don't try to run too far. You'll just, um, well, you'll be very tired. <laughs> that is an excellent, very ominous message that echoes out across the noosphere. And uh, uh, I think... I'll spend a sword lich. To... Uh, I'm sorry. I'll spend a sorcery beam too, to uh, allow them to respond in kind. Okay. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Do I know offhand what level or what um, degree Goetic they are? Uh, last you recall, you think they're a... Standby. <laughs> Standby. Last year... I'm just checking to see if it says if it says in the in the description because if it does not then I will make it up um, what are you right now level two level three you're level three Averaging things out, I think she's probably also about level three. But well, no, she's only summoning level three things, though. 
Um, I'm gonna say she's she's maybe uh, she's like a one or a two. Level three, you can summon six. It's just that uh, my. I, I learned a secret. Uh, well, well, she does summon a lot of them, though. That's the thing. She the, she she had like level three uh, creatures, but she had like four of them in there. Um, oh, that's really really high then, because yeah. a third level Goetta can only summon two level one spirits at the same time. Hmm. Okay. So there's there's clearly either she knows a secret or has a leg up somehow. Otherwise, but last you were aware, she was only level three. Okay. But it, it, it's been a little while. You, you haven't seen her recently. All right. Well, it, and she's gone. She, yeah. She's. Yeah. So yeah, at at the moment, yeah. But you've sent this message. Don't run too far, or you're going to get tired. And. He's just gonna pluck his knife out of the wall and grab the cloth and pocket that and uh, reach out to Vor and ask if it's all clear. Uh, yeah? There was Everyone's some... like <laughs> you were all just kind of like <laughs> <laughs> I love the tableaus that we were striking tonight. Um, <laughs> yeah. And Vor's of course like, Emma like <laughs> Yeah, finish, finishing her mental melon baller and is like, yeah, everything's totally fine in here. Um, there's just some um, well, there's these eyeball things, uh, but it's okay. I, I froze them, and uh, Shantano threw some through a soup pot, and uh, you know, Shah hit one of them with her fan. We, we, we've got it under control. Okay. I think uh, Mac is just going to retreat and uh, meet up with his uh, companions at the house. All right, excellent. And as we, and as we uh, we head back into the uh, as as Mac is heading back in to join the delightful frozen tableau uh, of, of of dinner, um, I think that is where we're going to pan out and uh, close for the night. Um, let us let us to let us go to to do our joy and despair. <laughs> um. Ooh, I, I, there's. That's awesome. I'm sorry. I'm seeing a delightful picture that very nicely looks a lot like Yestervale. That's very cool. That's very cool. Is this is this a thing I could potentially display? Or or is or is it? Uh... Yeah, you can put that anywhere. Awesome. Excellent. I may I may do that. Uh, uh, um, in a bit, not right this second because I got a, 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 a brain doing too many things at once. Um, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and go around and do our joy and despair. Um, and uh, so we'll see how we're doing. Uh, so we're gonna start once again with Shaw on this. Do you think, Janaya, do you think Shaw today got any joy or any despair? Um. I don't know. She was really useful, but I I kind of want to give her some despair for having missed out on like monster number two. I think that she has some despair for getting wrapped up in stuff. Um, one, getting left behind, like nobody left that nobody noticed that she didn't show up, and two, she wasn't there when no. Matt got shot. So like, I think that's a despair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's very fair. Um, so, so despair is is yours. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, over to Wild. Wild, do you think that Shantano got any joy or any despair today? Uh, today, I don't think they got either. Okay. Cool, cool. And uh, then uh, Aris, do you, we think Arusha got any joy or any despair today? I don't really think either. Um, like, <laughs> it was a pretty normal day for Arushka. <laughs> yeah. Good part for the course, I would think. All right. 
And, uh, Anino, do we think Mac got any joy or any despair today? It was despair. He, uh, he failed to, um, ambush the ambusher. Yeah, that is, that is true. That is true. They, they had set themselves up pretty well. Um, and, uh, Danielle, did, uh, Vor get any joy or despair today? I feel like Vor's been very gleeful throughout this whole thing, just because this town is, like, tailor-made for her like there's a bunch of weird mind stuff going on and it's so up her alley and she's just having the time of her life right now so i'm gonna take a joy okay <laughs> something else though and we will there will be more rp of this next session related to this but you have actually just done a thing that is that you've gotten the last of the royal brood so that actually is ridding the town of the uh of the Insidious, insidious. I almost of the insidious, um, and so uh, that means that uh, they that there is this kind of this this keening, this cry that goes up faintly that you that one can perhaps hear as these beings retreat, and everyone in town also is like ah for a moment not the people here because they're frozen but uh, <laughs> most of the people in town are like ah, for a second well not everyone in town but a number of people in town who have had suggestions implanted also um, as those suggestions burn out so and the insidious in town are now fleeing because they cannot stay here or those who can flee and uh, so everyone's going to get two acumen for this little task. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and go around and do our outros. So that is reverse order. And feel free to tell folks where they can find you. Feel free to plug anything you like and uh, give us any, uh, any, any, <laughs> any final thoughts. Uh, about this session, uh, favorite moments or what have you. And we will start, as always, with Danielle. Hi, everyone. I'm Danielle. I'm at Rackentor on Twitch and Twitter. You can follow me there for all kinds of nerdy content. Expect to see in the coming months some really cool cosplay stuff coming because uh, Dragon Con is next weekend and I've got a bunch of photo shoots scheduled, so stay tuned. Um, last week, I plugged our Dune Adventures in the Imperium game, um, and I said that the finale was going to be last week, but I lied because I got my calendar screwed up. The finale is actually tomorrow. So if if Modiphius's 2D20 uh, Dune Adventures in the Imperium game is something you're interested in seeing or learning more about, you should come check out the finale of Dune House Guild Run, our campaign where we are a house of entertainers and also spies. Um, and you can come see if, we're, if we all die to a House Harkonnen attack. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out tomorrow. Uh, that's to, it's, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Scott's Case Fox tomorrow at 8. Awesome. Awesome. And, and oh, and for this session, um, gosh, I, we did a, we didn't plot things in like four weeks. I'm really just astounded at like, how quickly we moved on this this is i mean it's on the name of introducing brunch to this town but we moved really fast i'm proud that's the uh that was the true thing that absolutely needed to be done um <laughs> the true purpose yeah, that's the real brunch. goal <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> awesome Excellent, excellent. Um, so let us now go over to Anino. How's it going, everyone? My name's Anino. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Anino4K. Uh, I think next time you will see me on Twitch is uh, next Saturday on uh, the Wandering DM channel at 1 p.m. Um, all the uh, weekly streams that I had during the week have been uh, canceled in lieu of the um, blackout on Twitch. So, uh, yeah, all week back. Anyway, uh, follow me on Twitter if you want. And uh, 
Ooh, we did a lot of boundary testing today <laughs> in this game. <laughs> um, which I thought was pretty interesting. And now we should probably, or I should probably sit down and um, look to spend some of this acumen and uh, make sure that I have all the uh, skills I need because, uh, yeah, we... Ooh, ooh. I felt like I got away with a little too much today. <laughs> <laughs> Rather a lot was going on, that is fair. Um, but, uh, ah, no worries. Um, let us go ahead and head over to Aris. Uh, hello, I am Aris. I'm Ennis Panthera and I'm Scott Panthera, practically everywhere on the internet. Um, I'm a real life zoologist, I love talking about animals, cosplay. Um, gaming, all that great stuff. The only place you can watch me playing games on the internet right now is right here on Saturdays, playing Visible Sun, but not next Saturday, because I'm also going to be at Dragon Con. Yay! Um, I don't have any photo shoots scheduled, but I did make like a bajillion new costumes, so possibly there will still be cool con cosplay content in the future. Um, that aside, um, my podcasting group, question mark, um, Black Lilac Productions is still looking for pitches for new shows. So if you have an idea for a podcast you'd like to get off the ground, um, send me a message uh, on Twitter or an email as animus.panthera at gmail.com. Um, this episode, I am also really impressed with how much plot we have succeeded in engaging in <laughs> in recent times. Um, and I'm really excited for next session since we're going to start off with having succeeded in this, and we got two evil bugs for our mushroom friends. So much success. <laughs> Excellent. I, I don't know if friends is the right word. That's <laughs> the air quotes. <laughs> That's fair. Friends. Business, business partners, friends. <laughs> Associates. <laughs> Not I get air quotes too. I don't know I want to be associated with them in the long term. Yeah, it's hard to know. Hard to know. <laughs> Fungi. Um, <laughs> Temporary employers. Yes. Yes, that's 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 fair. That's fair. <laughs> and uh, clients. Clients. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and head over to Wild. Oh, yes, hello. I'm Wild at Wild Engineer on Twitch and Twitter. Um, and right now, this is the only place where you can catch me doing stuff. So, yeah, catch me here again next Saturday. Um, yeah, it was a fun game. And Sean and I was now really looking forward to getting some shaved ice, some magical shaved ice, because that's all they ever really wanted. A lot of effort for shaved ice. <laughs> Well, everywhere else is just regular shaved ice. This is supposed to be magical shaved ice. Very true. They, they will get it to you however you want. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, let's uh, head over to Janaya. Hello, my name is Janaya, and you can find me at Janaya on most forms of social media. Um, you can't see me on any other streamed games right now but i did make a promise to a friend that i would start yelling more about weird art stuff on twitter so um please come throw likes or whatever digital boons matter at me otherwise i just feel like i'm yelling into the void and it's very weird so yeah um that's it and uh i don't know that was really that was really fun. I, I agree with Danielle. I can't believe how efficient we were about this particular mystery. <laughs> um, and that's pretty great. Um, yeah, I'm I'm sort of excited to see what comes next. I have that feeling like in the horror movie where you're like, we defeated the monster. Oh no, wait, because we still haven't run into Balok. But uh but but yeah, I'm excited that we're standing in this moment of fake victory. I think that's great. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> good, good. Very cool, very cool. And uh, back to me. I'm Jim. 
Um, I'm Jim Ryan. You can find me at Other Doc on both Twitch and Twitter. My website is jimyesthatjim.com, where you can find my Geek Observation podcast and links to my various other podcasts, audio dramas, writings, and such. I have links down below to my website, Twitter, YouTube channel, and various other things. Uh, here on this channel, uh, on Tuesday nights, we are uh, still playing our uh, Urban Shadows campaign, Lex Talionis, uh, set in present-day Rome, Italy. Um, and uh, they've made it to the... They've, they're in the final arc now. They've made it to the uh, to, to this party happening at the Palazzo. And uh, many, many supernatural beings are there. And it's, it's going to be good. Um, and uh, then, uh, then we just swing back around to Saturdays and we, when we have more of this. Because that's, that's all we have currently going on RPG-wise. Um, aside from, you know, it's just... But my, right now the channel is that and the occasional bouts of, uh, of City Skylines that I cannot escape. Uh, <laughs> because I cannot stop playing it. Um, and uh, so that's all we really have going on right now. Uh, but more soon. More is coming soon. Things are happening. Look for announcements shortly. Um, in the meantime, though, uh, we are going to... Uh, when we get out of here, let's see. Uh, I'm going to do a raid over to... Uh, let's see, an Arasis. They're doing uh, their, their Iron Sworn campaign from Dust. Um, we're going to go over there and say hi. Uh, feel free to hang on and say hi to them with us. That will be when we hit the end card. In the meantime, folks, thank you all very much for watching. Take care, and we will catch you next time. Farewell. <laughs>